While the concept of the rotary engine has been around since the 16th century, it took Mazda to make it a successful automotive engine. Over the last four decades, Mazda has produced nearly two million rotary-powered cars and positioned the rotary as a cornerstone of the brand's performance heritage. So in honor of the Mazda Rotary's 40th anniversary, we asked our FYI reporter Yolanda Vasquez to look at the past, present, and future of this uniquely spirited engine technology. Inventors have long been fascinated with the idea of creating a rotary internal combustion engine. But it was Felix Wankel, a self-taught German engineer, who brought the modern rotary engine to life. It was from NSU, the company he worked for, that Mazda bought the Asian rights to the engine back in 1961. There were problems with the original engine, but under the guidance of Kenichi Yamamoto and his tenacious research team, Mazda revamped the rotary for practical automotive use. So they ended up spending a number of years developing this engine, re-engineering it, if you will, refining it before they could actually put it in a car. In 1967, Mazda introduced the world's first car featuring a twin rotor rotary engine, the Cosmo Sport 110S. It generated quite a buzz in the Japanese market, but very few made it to the States. So most Americans never saw the curious looking sports car. It still looks very good for a 40-year-old car. Back in the 60s, the rotary was considered an automotive oddity. But Mazda VP Jay Amistoy says the Cosmo and its unique pistonless engine was revolutionary for its time. Zero to 60 in just under oh, eight and a half seconds. Top speed of about 115, which for the day was quite good. The first U.S. vehicle to feature a rotary engine came in 1970 with the R100. Mazda soon began airing commercials. The engine is a rotary. The car is a Mazda. Touting the virtues of their newfangled engine to American car buyers. The piston engine goes, but the Mazda goes. Subsequent cars include the RX-2, RX-3, all the way up to the RX-8, which debuted with the new Renesis rotary engine. And don't forget the RX-7 helped usher in the turbocharged rotary engine era. I right away felt like king of the road in it, because at that time it was probably one of the fastest cars on the road. Karen Elwell is a member of the Mazda Sports Car Club of Washington, D.C. She and other rain-soaked rotary devotees attended a recent driving event where stock and souped-up rotary engines were on display. We're a cult group. You know, we, we have the unique niche of liking the rotary, and, and of course they have wonderful piston vehicles, and they're just fun to drive. Member Chris Regan, with a table setup of engine parts, spoke of the differences between a piston engine and a rotary. You get much more power out of it for the displacement. It's only a 1.3 liter engine, but it uh, is classed similar to what a 2.6 liter piston engine is. So it's a much more, much more powerful engine for its size. Mazda even manufactured a few rotary engine pickup trucks. Uh, I've had a lot of compliments about it, especially at gas stations or at restaurants or something like that. Just 15,000 rotary trucks were built, making this 75 Ripu a rare sight on the roads. Uh, everybody was pretty surprised to see it, uh, especially with this good a shape that it's in. To commemorate the 40th anniversary of the rotary engine, Mazda is offering a limited special edition RX-8. Available at dealers now, the four-seat Sportster features a metropolitan gray exterior with an upgraded leather interior. Quite a striking vehicle. It has special wheels, a number of special treatments inside and out to separate it from the regular RX-8. As for the future, Mazda remains committed to the rotary engine. They've developed a hydrogen-fueled RX-8 that's being leased to government agencies in Japan. Other green applications are being considered as well, a strong testament to the adaptability of an over-the-hill engine that isn't ready to retire anytime soon. The piston engine goes, but the Mazda goes.